Hey everyone, it's Leo Young here with Impressive Graphics Media, and I want to go over the news of the recently canceled Netflix show Luke Cage and Iron Fist. So like I said, recently Netflix had canceled Luke Cage and Iron Fist, with the fandom believing that Marvel had actually cut the shows to be either able to create the team-up show Heroes for Hire, or to place them on their upcoming streaming service. Like I said, all these companies have or are trying to make their own streaming service, Disney's trying, uh, DC just did, Amazon has Amazon Prime, or other things. And now Marvel's trying to get a piece of the pie. Well, Screen Rant managed to get their hands on the viewership reports for both shows and had a data, data analysis company called JumpShot look over the info, which shows a major drop in viewership uh, in these fan favorite shows. They managed to learn that both shows lost two thirds of their viewership after season one. Now below is a comparison made by Screen Rant to show the differences between Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Daredevil. Um, I guess I'll just show it right here. Now, it's stated that Netflix wanted to renegotiate their deal with Marvel by dropping Luke Cage from a 13-episode show to a 10-episode show. Iron Fist, on the other hand, just couldn't keep up with the other shows. Jessica Jones and The Punisher are still scheduled for a third and second season coming sometime next year, so they're safe. Now, this really makes you sit down and wonder what Marvel's future for the TV properties will be and if they are able to actually bring in the amount of viewers needed to be successful. In my honest opinion, the reason that Luke Cage and Iron Fist weren't able to keep their viewerships up is simply because the stories told aren't, well, wild enough. Um, Cage can't be harmed by any other means unless the dude or creature is stronger than him, and Danny Rand's first season was unable to grab enough traction to bring any following to season two. The idea that the show's going to Heroes for Hire wouldn't be able to happen, it actually wouldn't make any sense the more I think about it because of where Luke Cage season two left off, and... They, that's just about it. They became too grounded in a sense. Now, Jessica Jones' personality draws people in while the aggressive nature of the Punisher calls attention to the screen. They do their parts well. Um, as a fan of these shows, as a fan of both Marvel, not just Marvel, but the Netflix series, um, I don't know. I would, I personally would believe that Marvel would try to continue on their net, on their uh, series, on their own thing, but on their own streaming service but Netflix pretty much said yo look at these numbers like they're not keeping up with how they used to be so on our channel and that's ours we're Netflix so if they're not doing it good here they probably won't do it good on your service because one thing about a streaming service is you have to pay for it I don't think anyone's going to pay for Marvel streaming service if they can just go watch Netflix now that's the reason that Marvel and Disney and D and all these other companies pretty much come up with their own ideas like if you want to watch because if you don't know, this is a bit of side news. They're creating other TV shows for other heroes. Falcon's getting his own TV show. Uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision are getting their own TV show. A lot of characters, main Marvel movie characters, are getting their own TV show. Mainly because I'm under the impression that they're not coming back to the movies. Simply because after Infinity War Part 2, I believe it's called Avengers Annihilation, um, Marvel's taking a strange turn into space or something. So I'm guessing their TV universe will be based on Earth. And I'm hoping that's not true, because the more I just say that out loud, it doesn't sound right in any way, shape, or form. But if you you can go back and scroll and see the numbers again for Luke Cage and Daredevil. Like, Daredevil Season 2 had 100. Uh, 100%, not 100% sure what that means. It could mean it still kept its 100% viewership. But that's because it works like this for me. Iron Fist and Daredevil... Uh, I'm sorry. Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage are the only uh, enhanced individuals on the show you can add daredevil if you want but i'm going to add those three because they have something that not anybody could just get so you look at it luke cage the weakness for him was the what was it called the certain bullet that could drill through his skin and blow up inside of him after season two they pretty much said yeah that doesn't work anymore you can't burn him you can't blow him up you can't do anything to him the only thing you can do is threaten the cities and he's not willing to kill people because a lot of people keep going like luke if you try to kill anyone we will stop you and you'll have to hurt us to do all that so it's like Luke was like alright I might as well just become a kingpin of my own and control Harlem's gangs that way you know that way nothing will happen to anyone and that's why I don't believe a Heroes for Hire show would make sense because of how they left him off Luke Cage is essentially the villain and I don't think Danny Rand would be a person to a person to work with Luke Cage if that's his character um, 
sorry. Adding on to that, I don't think that would be a person that they would work. I could see if Luke Cage was actually the villain of Iron Fist season three, or Jessica Jones. But that's that's the thing is like Iron Fist and Luke Cage really worked well together in the season two of Luke Cage when they came together and they did the fist thing. I was like, this show is fucking great. This is why this these two work so well together. But separate, there is a certain point where it's like, no. Because Iron Fist fights individuals who can give him a run for his money. Uh, Luke Cage can still get knocked around by Iron Fist. He can't be hurt, but he can be knocked down. People who fight like Iron Fist would be able to do a little bit of damage to Luke Cage instead of like a gangster. And people like Luke Cage, Iron Fist would have to put a whole lot of effort into taking them out. Combine the two, they work well together. I'm sorry if I'm going on a quick rant. That's that's that. What I'm trying to say is, they're like I said, too grounded. Luke Cage is fighting gangsters and shit, and I guess gangsters with super strength and still winning. The Iron Fist is fighting ninjas and shit. I don't actually know. I didn't watch Iron Fist too, so I'm suspecting that he's fighting the Hand and a number of ninjas, or he's fighting the corporate world. Either or is scary, in my opinion. Jessica Jones, however, it's her personality. It's the fact that she was raped and she's fucking healing from it. She has PTSD. She's an asshole. And you want to see how she keeps growing as a person. The Punisher is the fucking Punisher. People want... Punisher is not like any other character other than Daredevil. And that's why I think those two work. Because Daredevil was the first show. He is essentially their Iron Man. And the fact that he's so aggressive, that he's got all of these these issues, these contemplated issues inside his own soul, he's like, I don't know if I should keep on breaking people's noses, or if I should finally push over the edge and murder. And De Punisher's like, <coughs> Rick! Uh, walking dead joke. But that's essentially it. These characters are so violent and aggressive that we're not used to that from Marvel. Even Hulk has become a bitch. I'm not even gonna like bleep that out. He's become a bitch. I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, Takiti, Wakiti, Wak, 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 the guy who made Thor Ragnarok. Good Hulk. Made him a bitch. But coming back to the TV shows, that's where I'm like, okay, so these shows aren't wild enough. I don't, I don't generally know because Luke Cage. That's the thing about Luke Cage. He seems like he's got his shit together. Like, he seems like he's at the pinnacle of where he could be as a person. Like, he'll learn from this mistake, and then he'll go back to the to Pop's, like, barbershop. But as a human being, Luke is all... That's why I wasn't happy with season one of Luke Cage. I was one in that rat... Not ratchet, but that ghetto-ass... Sweet Christmas! Y'all drive-ass crackers. That kind of... Not that specific Luke Cage, but something similar to that. Because Luke, in my head, ever since I first met him or read and played a game about him, um, he wasn't very chill. He became chill as time went on, but when he started, he had no chill. He was just too smooth, cool. You know, he's too cool for school, whatever the hell it is. That's how I see it. Iron Fist, I don't really know. So that's why I'm like, are these other shows that Netflix, I mean, not Netflix, that Marvel wants to throw out actually going to be able to keep up? Because The Runaway is different. The Runaway is a bunch of kids. And one of their villains was apparently conducted for sexually misconduct with a child. But, hey, at least he's still a real-life supervillain. Um, but all these other shows that Marvel's got coming up, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's not. It's going to be Marvel's money and not Netflix money. And Marvel's like, all right, we're going to go all out. We're not going to use the, 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 the Iron Fist gun. Luke Cage is going to fight like a robot. We're going to go all out. We're going to make this, like a little crazy and that's pretty much how agents of shield kind of won me over when i saw quake versus graviton i was like they are finally doing it they can't keep making the marvel universe like the real universe at a certain point there will be a diverge in what you can and can do what can and be what can and cannot be accepted and then we also have to deal with the fact that now if marvel has a streaming service and they take their shows and put it on there they're going to have to fucking come connect the two shows because they even went off and said yeah all of these shows take place before Thanos snap so the fact is Luke Cage is a known enhanced superhuman and I'm pretty and I don't know if the Sokovia Accords only account for normal I mean not normal but like the Avengers or if they count for all enhanced if they count for all enhanced 
uh, everyone in the fucking Netflix series is going to be taken down except for uh, Daredevil and The Punisher. If they connect the Marvel Universe, Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the Marvel TV Universe. That's all they talk. Weird. But anyway, I feel like I've gone on too far. So I'm going to just leave it here for you. What do you guys think about this? Do you believe, not believe, the numbers don't lie. I really don't know. What are your thoughts and opinions on all of this? What do you think about all of the facts that Luke Cage and Iron Fist failed, not because Netflix or Marvel wanted to um, make a Heroes for Hire, but just because they didn't keep the same viewership ratings? Like, in reality, let's say the numbers that you saw are percentages. Daredevil Season 2 kept 100% of its viewership after Season 1. Luke Cage Season 1 had 92%. Or 92, I don't know how to say this. Uh, Luke Cage Season 2 had 38%. We're just going off percentages. I don't know exactly what these are. Screen Rant didn't have percentages. They didn't have 100 out of 100 viewership percent or whatever. So I'm just going off of that. Do you think, or what do you what do you think? That's pretty much it. What do you think about all of this? Or, I don't know. There is a link in our description. We always have the sources. If you want to go out and go see what Screen Rant wrote, you can continue going in, you can follow the rabbit hole. Just know that Jessica Jones, Daredevil, and The Punisher are safe for now. At any point, they could pull the plug. They're probably working on it right now, and Marvel and Netflix are like, we're we're spending too much money on this show. We can't pull the plug now. We might as well finish it. Um, But yeah, that's where I'm going to have to leave it off. So other than that, I hope you guys did find this video enjoyable and informative. If you did, please... Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get access to our notification gong. Show us some love. Uh, don't forget to also share, like, comment. Let's get this discussion going. I wanna, I wanna hear from my other Marvel fans, and not just Marvel fans, but the people who only watch the Netflix shows. Anyone who does a little bit of data analysis, any anybody really. I wanna hear this from everyone. Um, and other than that, like I always say, I'm Leo Young. This is Impressive Graphics Media. See you in the next one. Peace and stay impressive.